Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Felt Tube. My name is Christine, and welcome if you're new, and welcome back if you are a returning subscriber. I am so happy to have you here with me today. Uh, I just wanted to get this a video made here before I dive into one of my Halloween kits. Uh, I just posted a reel on Instagram probably last week sometime showing the kits that I had to choose from, and I was so sure that the one I was going to stitch first is this one right here called Spellbound Greetings. And I was all ready to start this, and then I was watching um, Jennifer over at The Good Life. I think that's the name. I think I think her YouTube channel is called Jennifer Good. I'm not sure, but I know. I think it's a tag, The Good Life. I'll, I'll link her channel below if you haven't watched it. But uh, just recently, she started working on this kit. She's got, as of the recording of this today, she has two parts of this kit out already. She did the first part where she stitched the owl, and then the second part she did this first sign, and I was watching it, and I thought maybe I would dive into this kit because it's just really cute, but I'm torn because I also really want to work on this one. So what I was thinking about doing is I may very well work on both of these, um, and the reason why, I think I, I was just wanted to show you that I was going to start this, but because she's doing such a thorough job on her channel, going through every detail of how to make the kit, and she, she does a deep dive into it on her channel. So I will link her channel below, and then what I might just do is kind of show you how mine's looking as I go along here. Um, and then I will also probably do a little bit more detail on this kit. So I think since she does a lot of that on her channel, you can watch that for this kit, but today I will go ahead and open this kit and we can take a look inside. So this this video is probably going to feature two kits and we'll see. We'll, we'll see which one I, if I get them both done or just one of them done. But I wanted to open this one up and take a look inside with you here today. This is interesting. Oh, this comes with, okay, so this feels like interfacing. Now this might be iron-on interfacing or, well, so I guess this is what you're, we're going to back it with, is this stiff, it's, it's just like stiff interfacing. So I have not used that in a kit before. Okay, so yeah, uh, going forward in this video, I will show you the progress that I make on both of these. I may, since I opened this one, maybe I'll go ahead and start this one, but I kind of want to work simultaneously on both of them just because the, the sign, the Halloween sign looks more elaborate and that's probably going to take longer, but I kind of want to work on them both. I'd like to have them both done by Halloween this year. All right, that's it for now. I'll check in when I've got something to show on one or both of these kits, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Good morning and welcome back. It's time for an update. I ended up not working on the door hanger so far. I know I said I was just going to start this and then work on that one mainly, but I got started on this one and I can't pull myself away. So I have not started that one and I have continued working on this one because now I kind of would like to get this one done. So, I don't know. We'll have to see where the rest of the video goes. So, I thought I would just update you now as to what I've gotten done on this. Um, I wanted to show you, did I say the date? So, today is August 31st. It is Thursday, August 31st. I don't remember when I did my first clip, but it's probably been about, you know, maybe a week and a half or so, something like that. Um, maybe two weeks. I want, wanted to show you that uh, I use these Loran project cards here to sort my floss and I don't usually write the number because it's pretty obvious I think um, 
you know, what when you lay them out like this to see what the dark brown and light brown and, you know, red brown. <laughs> but these are DMC colors and you could put them if you would like to on here, but I just haven't really found that necessary with these kits, just like I said, because it's pretty obvious. So that is how I like to organize my floss. And so let's talk about, um, so the reason why I keep going on this is because I'm still watching Jennifer Good over at The Good Life. I will link her once again below uh, because she's working on this. She has just the most wonderful series of tutorials going on about this where she is going through step by step. She is so good about following these instructions and going step by step with these. And I just, as much as I try to want to do these, these kits step by step, I just, it just doesn't work as well for me to do that. I like to do more kind of the, um, you know, where I, I, I cut all the pieces out and then I applique all, you know, do the embroidery on all the pieces and then do the sequins and, you know, sequining, see, is it sequencing or sequining? I don't know, quite know how you say that, but that's the way I do it. So anyway, if you like to do the step-by-step, -step, definitely check out her channel. I'm just kind of not really showing you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, but more so just uh, the results of what I've worked on. So what I did originally is I got started with uh, working on the, uh, so I cut out all the pieces and then I started just working on the individual. Now you can see that I've done none of this sequence yet um, because I like to do the sequence after I get the pieces applique because um, this is all going to be hidden anyway so I just like to I find that it just gives my hand something to hold more when I put the sequence on these little pieces versus putting the sequence on and then and then um, adding them so there was just a little bit of stuffing that needed to be done on this and then I did the embroidery so so far what I've done is completed a little face there and then I did the embroidery on the body of the owl there. This is just your simple outline stitch. And then I did the embroidery on the wings. And then what I need, so they have to, I think what I need to do is I need to cut some poster board out because none of this, I don't think, most of this sign is all going to be just um, not stuffed, but you have to put the poster board, the, the poster board that comes with the kit and I might need to go pick up some more of that because you obviously need a lot for this kit. So I'm just kind of putting that all on the side. I don't know once I'm, once I get done with all the embroidery, then I'm going to do all the sequins and then I'm going to cut the cardboard out and assemble the pieces. So that's kind of how I'm going about. So this is mostly just to show you what I've gotten done. Um, so here's see, I have cut out all of the pieces these are just to kind of show you the letters and stuff like that and how these are all ready to go and I'm going to just be appliquing all the letters on so yes those are all cut out and ready to go and you got to keep them in a bag so that you don't lose any of those little pieces they tend to want to stick to things and you end up uh, finding them laying around the house if you're not super careful so I like to keep them in these little bags and so here dump this all out. So this is what my kit is. So here's the little letters, all little purple letters, and some of those were very, very thin. I have to be very careful with those. These are some more letters I cut out. And then what I am current, oh, here's some more letters. Here's some black letters. And now I'm currently working on doing the embroidery on the signs. So I've got all the embroidery done on this one. This is the actual post that's going to be divided in half like that. So I've got the embroidery done on that. Those are the backing pieces. So those are just, they do have some wrinkles in them. I think I will iron them. I, over time, I do believe that the, 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 the wrinkles do come out, but I think I'm going to probably just run a, a, an iron over some of these pieces just to get them, even though that's the back and nobody really sees it. I just like having them ironed. And now I'm currently working on the embroidery on this part here. 
And the only embroidery left I have to do for the signs is this one. How does that go like that? So I need to do the embroidery on that one, which is going to be a dark green. And these are just the backings, it looks like, for the other pieces. So I'm almost done with the embroidery. But that's not all. I actually did some more stuff here because I really got into some of these cute little fun elements here and I have done the embroidery on this cute little sign which was fun that was a back stitch I did the embroidery on the feet that are going to go under the owl which I think get attached. Most of the stuff I think gets attached at the end. That done. And I did the embroidery on the ghost. And I do believe, let me see, is that, is that focusing here? I don't know. Yeah, it's focusing there. So I think, no, it wasn't that. I was thinking that there needed to be some satin stitch on that, but the only, the satin stitch I had to do there, if I can get a close up of that, you can see. You had to do this thin layer of satin stitching around the eyes in green, and that was a bit tricky to do, and then a couple of French knots for the eyes. Turned out adorable. Then the skull, they actually wanted you to satin stitch the eyes. I did not do that. I cut out black pieces of felt instead, but I did satin stitch the nose and the, the uh, absence of teeth, basically the, <laughs> the area in between the teeth. But I just did not want to take the time to satin stitch the, all those eyes. So I cut out some black felt for that instead. Uh, this is going to be the, so this, this is the crossbones. I had to do a little bit of embroidery right there and I realized afterwards I was supposed to only use one strand of black and I used two, but that's okay, I'm gonna leave it. And then the last part is the broom right there. I did the outline stitch on that and then what I am gonna do, but I don't know if I have to do that, I think I have to do that after I, when you add the, the the stick to this, you're going to do something that's called a thread wrap, where I take red floss and just wrap it around right there to end up with sort of it looking like the broom was, here, let me show you on the, can you see on the picture right there, right there, you can see that's what they want you to do with the red floss is just wrap it around. So I'm going to do that, but I think I have to wait until I get the, the, you know, stick part done. And then you do that at, at the end. So I'll hold off on that. So that's pretty much where I'm at with that. Uh, I've done a lot, just don't have it done, any step really done to completion. I just have them kind of all ready to go. And I think, um, boy, I have my work cut out for me with all these sequins though. There are a ton of sequins that need to be done. And I'm pretty slow at doing sequins. So that part to me takes a little bit longer. I really enjoy the embroidery part. I really enjoy the cutting out and the embroidery because I can kind of sit sort of relaxed on the couch and and it's, you know, watch TV and do that. But with the sequence, it, it requires just a little bit more, um, you kind of have to have a setup in front of you. And so I tend to, although I like the way the sequins look, it's not as enjoyable for me to actually do the sequins. So I will have a lot though, because as you can see from this, you know, all those letters, all around the signs themselves and then the letters themselves have tons of sequins so there's a lot of sequins that need to be done on this kit which it's just gonna look amazing when it's done I'm very excited about that and then of course I'll, I'll have to get some more extra probably poster board to be able to cut the, the poster board for all these pieces so that's where I'm at I thought I would just give you that little bit of an update and uh, I don't know if in this same video I'll work on the door hangers or not. We shall see. This video might get kind of long, so. All right, and I may upload it in parts. Maybe I'll just upload this as a single part and then do a part two. I'll have to decide. But 
that is it for now. Um, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you either in another video or in another clip, whatever I decide to do. All right, bye for now. Good morning and welcome back to my channel. I don't remember when I filmed that last clip, but I feel like it was the end of August and it is now the end of September, September 29th to be exact. So I'm here to show you what I got done. I didn't have a whole lot of crafting time at the beginning of September. I don't think I did anything for the first half. And so what I've done, I started maybe about mid-September and I got back to doing a little bit of the applique on this. Um, I did just review my footage and saw that I hadn't, I had cut a lot of stuff out and I had started embroidering some of the, uh, doing the embroidery outline stitch on some of the signs. And I have now added all the lettering um, to the signs. So I went ahead and stitched the letters on here and then I did this one. And what I have left to do on this sign is right here, these are supposed to be satin stitched. Uh, the parts of these letters are supposed to be satin stitched. So I still have that to do. I think I just missed that when I was doing the rest of the embroidery. So I will do that when I'm feeling uh, like doing satin stitch. And you can see, I haven't done it yet because I have not felt like doing satin stitch. Just yet. And then I've got all the letters put onto this one. Let me move this out of the way. And then I got the letters and I finally decided that I was going to start needing to do some of the sequins. And so after I stitched the letters on this one, I went ahead and did the sequins. And you can see there is a lot. It took me about three hours to do the sequins on just those letters. And you can see, I still have a lot of sequins left to do. So all of the outline around the signs are going to have some sequins. And then obviously all of these letters where all the little dots are. So that the background uh, sequins to do on the orange and then the black sequins on the letters. So yes, I still have my work cut out for me with sequins. And so I'm plugging away at those and then I didn't do anything more with the owl. Uh, that's still in the, the same position it was in last time, but I did cut out all the cardboard. I really wasn't looking forward to that, but I got all of the pieces for the cardboard cut out for, for um, that and the signs as well. Um, I got the cardboard cut out for this and I love how uh, Jennifer, who I mentioned earlier in this channel, has uses these clips when she does her felt kits, and I thought that was an amazing tip, and so I have started using that too, because when you have the cardboard in between there, you can't really pin it um, to hold it. And there are some things you just need to hold steady, and like long pieces like this, you don't really want them to shift or they get all wonky, so I love the idea of using those clips. So I got that done and I did cut all the cardboard for all of the signs too, but I don't really feel the need to show you that. Then I cut the cardboard for this and completely assembled this piece here. So it is now ready to attach. My favorite piece I've done is this little broom I think is adorable. And I just think it turned out so cute and it's got the little, uh, thread that you wrap around and for some reason they put the stamp on the wrong side of this um, but that's okay because it's going to be on the back so instead of that being on the inside it's kind of on the back of the broom. I'm not quite sure why but that's going to be on the back anyway attached and so that's cute. I loved making that. Then I did work on the skull and I think I had showed you, yes, that I didn't do the satin stitching for the eyes. I just cut out felt, but I went ahead and got those, um, both of those pieces sequined, stuffed, and all ready to attach. And then I did the sequins on the ghost and fully got him stuffed and everything too. So pretty cute. So those are all, I've made some progress, but I have a lot of sequins left to do, so I'm gonna just keep plugging away at these sequins, and then I'll probably just come back in and show you uh, maybe before I assemble it all how it looks, or I might just 
show you the final thing. It just depends. <laughs> My recording time lately has been hard to come by, so we'll just see. But I did not want to upload this video without at least letting you know that I did get started on my Spellbound greeting. So let me clear this up for a minute and then I'll be right back and show you what I've started on that. All right, so just a reminder, the Spellbound greetings looks like that. And I went ahead and organized my floss on one of the floss cards and I stuck a little piece of felt. I stitched a piece of felt onto this card and it works really nice as being a little needle holder too. So I think they actually make these cards that have a magnet attached to these that holds your needle but still I don't know if I would trust a magnet when I'm sticking this in a little project bag. So uh, I thought that was kind of a, a nifty idea. Okay so instead of cutting out all the pieces I decided I was going to focus on probably working on this one first. So I got a little bit of a start on it now is by cutting out. So I cut out the interfacing that goes on the back, the Pellon interfacing, and cut out all these pieces, but nothing has been attached to the back yet. I just sort of had it laid out there. And the only thing that I've actually appliqued so far is the potion inside of the potion bottle. And um, as you can see from here, those little bubbles there were supposed to be satin stitched and I went ahead and just cut out little round pieces of felt there um, because I was working on this late at night and I, I'm, I was like nope I'm not doing satin stitching I'm just going to do felt and yeah so very very cute so far I love the way it's it's going to look <laughs> so probably what I'll work on next is embroidering the letters and then I'm going to go ahead and embroider all of the letters and the whatever that's coming out of the potion, the, the smoke. Get that all stitched and then last but not least I will do the sequence, all the sequence on this and then all then you do is just attach it um, to, I guess you just applique around the edge to add this to the back because it's kind of got some stiffness to it but it does not call for a piece of cardboard or anything. Hold on one second. Okay, so I just double checked the instructions and I did confirm that you do not put cardboard in, in between this and I think that that makes sense because when you put it over a doorknob, you want this to be able to sort of stretch a little bit and be a little bit flimsy. So I don't know, it seems like I, I might want to put maybe just a little bit of quilt batting in there just to kind of make it a little bit fluffy but still flexible. So we'll see when I do the assembly part on that. But I just wanted to get in here and show you that I did start that one and uh, next time I film a clip, I should have this one finished and maybe this one started. Uh, I didn't cut out any of the pieces yet for it, but I have it all put in a bag ready to go. So, okay, that's it for now. I'm going to uh, come back in a little bit and show you my progress. Before I let you go, I did want to show you that I bought another, yet another Halloween kit from Lucilla this one right here and it is called Halloween Squad and I bought it because of their dangly little legs I think those are so cute and so now I was just wondering if I were to do another Halloween kit which one would you like to see me do I've got this one I've got, this is the newest one I got and then this one here is another one called perfectly spooky so it's a cat in all these little different Halloween costumes and then I also still have this one that I bought a while ago that I haven't started yet and it's just got all these tiny little ornaments so I think that's all the ones that I have so they're cute they all they all look um, if I had if I had to make a suggestion to Bucilla, I would actually recommend that they sort of shake things up a little bit because if you notice the ones all the different kits, Halloween kits they have, they sort of rehash sort of that same owl, the same cat, the same pumpkin, and the same ghost, which I love. They're super cute because they have kind of that vintage Halloween look, but it kind of 
you know, if you're someone like me who stitches them all, they start to all look the same after a while. So it would be kind of interesting if they sort of um, kind of redesigned some of them in a different style just to, you know, make it a little bit more interesting for those of us that feel the need to buy all of their kits. <laughs> all right, leave a comment below and let me know out of these which ones you'd like to see. So this is just a uh, I don't know what, if this one has names, just Halloween ornaments. So there's Halloween ornaments, Perfectly Spooky, and Halloween Squad. Honestly, I don't know if I'll do any of these again this year because it's already going to be October 1st in a couple of days. And I'm also doing a lot of cross-stitching, so we'll have to see. I may not actually start any of these this year. Okay, that's it. See you uh, in the next clip. Bye for now. Hey there, I'm back and I've been working away on my door hanger and I wanted to, uh, before I assemble the backing on it, well, I was going to show you, first of all, the finished applique and sequence on the front. I got that all done. Uh, I think I made a mistake. I was supposed to do the the letter of the word for. It was supposed to be in purple and I wasn't paying attention and I did it in blue, but that's okay. Is everything else? Oh, I missed some sequins. Oh, goodness. How did I miss that? Okay, so I'm not done. Okay, I'll get that done tonight. But what I really wanted to show you is that I just had a couple of minutes and I was putting it on its backing right here. And I noticed when I line up with the backing here that it's the backing's just a little bit bigger. It just has kind of, you know, it, the whole thing doesn't fit quite as much and I was I, quite as uh, perfectly just because because we all know that the fabric kind of gets distorted when we're working on it. But I thought that I would go ahead and add a little bit of, oh, I was looking for some quilt batting to stuff in between here, but um, instead I found some felt. So I went ahead and cut some felt right here, just two pieces of white felt that I had. And I just traced this on it and then cut it and made it a little bit smaller. Okay, so yeah, it's not perfect, but I just made it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to go ahead then and put this uh, backing, the Pellon backing on it. And I'm going to do a stitch around it and then it'll be done. But before I do that, I need to go finish those last yellow sequins. Make sure. All right, we got it all done. Didn't particularly enjoy stitching the interfacing on. It was kind of stiff, but... And uh, that's about the best I can make my stitches look on the outside, but definitely gives it some stability. So I'm really excited. I'm going to go hang it on a doorknob and enjoy it. So sparkly. Yep. It's about just a little. So that the felt that I put in between gave it a little bit more, uh, just kind of gave it a little bit more fluff, but not too much. I mean, it's still pretty thin, but perfect. I think it's perfect for a, let's just hang it on the dresser right here and see how that looks. Very cute. All right. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and upload this video now because I don't think that I'm going to get the Halloween sign done this year. I apologize. I do. I have developed a little bit of a cold, so my voice is sounding a little gruff, but I do want to just say that I'm going to get my video up this part one, and then we'll do part two. Maybe, you never know, I might get this the rest of the sign done this year, but uh, if not, then we'll just uh, pick up where we left off next October. Well, guess what? There's been a plot twist, and I finished the Halloween sign. I'm so excited. So in that last clip, when I said I was feeling like I was coming down with something, well, I did, and I found myself with a whole week of tons of crafting time on my hand, and I decided that this project was going to take precedence over all my other projects. And so I just buckled down and finished it, and I'm so excited because I just finished it yesterday, the day before Halloween. Look at that. I'm going to take it outside and show you it so you can really see the full sparkle. Um, this is the, the back side here. Um, it was a bit of a challenge. 
lint on it. It was a bit of a challenge putting these signs on the stick because they both have cardboard in them and that was very tricky but you know it was the very last thing I did so of course I was motivated knowing that if I could just get through that part I would be done. Um, I really wish I would have ironed my felt first because it does bug me that the ears but you know that's the back and I think over time those wrinkles will probably go away but this is the finished project and I'm so excited about it. So let me take it outside and show you how it looks um, all in its sparkle, sparkly glory. And then I'll show you where I'm hanging it at in my house. So when you come in my hallway, um, I just have it hanging there right on my wall. So it just looks great. Okay, let's go outside in the sun and I'll show you all the sparkles because this thing has a lot of sequins. Okay, so we had a little bit of snow, so um, it's cold out here, and I don't have any shoes on, so I'll make this quick, but I just wanted to show you a close-up of all of the sequins there. So all the black has sequins, and then this one was really, this is, there was a lot of sequins on that sign right there on all those white letters. And You'll be proud of me because I even did the satin stitching on those letters. All right, so, yep, that is it. Let me go back inside. My feet are freezing. Okay, so the only thing I didn't get done in this video that I had set out to do was this other door hanger here of the Spellbound Greetings. So that is definitely going to have to wait till next year, um, but I will work on that definitely next year because it looks cute and I really am excited to get that done. So sorry I didn't make it into this video, but you know, I, I had many other crafting things I was working on, so that one's just going to have to wait. All right, that is it for now. Time to wrap up this video and I may very well even get this... Uh, upload it for you while it's still Halloween. <laughs> That's my goal anyway. And I thank you so much for watching. If you have worked on this kit or, you know, have any questions or anything, just leave me a comment down below and I will see you in the next video. Let's see, plans coming up. Um, I did get a new kit. Oh, let me go grab it. Hold on. All right. So this is one of my latest acquisitions. This is called Dressed Up Gingerbread. That I'm really excited to get to but I don't know if I'll do that next because I also got some kits from Hirschner's which I have never done one of their felt kits but this one right here is called pumpkin spice ornaments and that looks really fun looks like uh, some good quality uh, sequins and stuff from what I can see so maybe I'll dive into one of those and there's also this autumn woodland and I have one other kit that I bought from them that I think are fall leaves, but they are back ordered. So autumn woodland ornaments. Sorry about that dog. That is not my dog. That's my neighbor's dog. Um, so yeah, I don't know what I'll work on next because I have a lot of cross stitching I'm working on too. And oh yeah, hold on. All right. I had also bought a couple more of the pumpkin spike. I mean the uh, pandas at the Mary collectibles from Mary stockings. I got this guy and I already started him. I'm going to have a different video with these. And then this is a little Halloween one, which is so cute. And then I did order one last one that is uh, their last release for the year. And it's a panda with a chef's hat on and he's holding a, an apple pie or a pie or something like that's adorable. So I definitely want to find time to get these done too. Okay, that is all for now. This video is probably super long, so I'm going to go ahead and get it edited and get it uploaded for you to enjoy. And I will see you in the next video. Happy felting. Bye for now. Bye.